Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new here, welcome and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I know it's been a while since I have posted a video, but now I am back and will be posting more. Today I'm going to be making this horse themed cake topper. This video is kind of long, so let me know if you guys prefer one long video or two videos, which would be part one, the design, and part two, the assembling. So let's get started. This is how the finished design is going to look like on Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new canvas and go to my images. And we're gonna be uploading all the images that we're gonna be using for this cake topper. So on Cricut Design Space, there's a subscription which is Cricut Access and you have access to all these images for $10 plus tax a month. So there's lots of horses to choose from. I'm just going to be using this horse. My images are now uploaded onto my canvas and I'm gonna be working on the rolling hills image. So I do not have all the shades of green in this image, but if you want your cake topper to be more detailed, you can always cut it out. But I'm gonna be doing a print and cut. I'm gonna be removing these holes from the image because I don't want them to be cut out onto my image. I'm going to be looking for the layer that has the holes and I'm going to be just hiding the contours. And for it to be a printed cut, you want to flatten the the image we are going to make our arch bigger 
I'm going to be making my 6 inches. Doesn't really what size to choose because at the end we're going to be resizing it again to however big we want our cake topper to be. I'm also going to be resizing the heels the same size as the arch for now. But later on in the video I resize it again to its final size. We are going to send the image to the back. Just right click, send to back. And we're going to select the hills and the arch and we're going to group them together and set aside. I'm setting these images aside and I'm going to get to my horse. I'm going to be changing the color of my horse. I'm going to be doing a tan of off-white color. Choose whatever color you want your horse to be. Next, you want to make the hedge image big, so just make it big. I'm just going to be using the top hedge, so ungroup, select the bottom hedge and delete, select the top hedge and group it, set aside. We're going to be making our own ranch gate. We're going to be using this ranch gate as a template. I'm going to be deleting the word ranch, so on your layers panel, just click on the part of the image that you want to delete. You can press the delete key or press the delete on the screen. I'm also going to be deleting the grass. Now we're going to select the image and we're going to ungroup the, the gate. I'm going to be deleting the brown planks. We're going to be working on the bottom image. I just want the top plank. I don't want the fence at the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to be slicing the image. I'm going to go to my shape, select a rectangle. I'm going to make sure it covers the fence that I want to remove. You want to select your rectangle and the image that you're going to be slicing, which is back image and I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to do a slice. I'm going to be deleting the rectangle, delete and delete and now we are left with our plane. Now we're going to go to our shapes and select the square. We're going to be making the square into a rectangle so on the sides just unlock the lock and like I said before we're just going to be using the ranch gate image as a template so I'm going to be making my rectangle the same size as the rectangles on the gate. So I'm just going to be resizing them. Now I'm going to click on the gate and in the layers panel I'm going to click on the eye beside it so I can unsee the gate. It's not going to be deleted. I just want to make sure that the rectangles are lined up with the guidelines just so I can know they are even. Once you make sure that your rectangles are even. Go ahead and look for the gate layer and click the eye so you can see the gate again. Now we're going to be using our fence and I'm just going to 
line it up with the with the fence that's already on the gate when you are sizing the fence on top in the size section you want to unlock the lock so you are able to size it more easily Once I size my gate, I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to flip horizontal, and I'm just lining it up with the rectangle that we did. I'm going to click on the ranch gate, the one that we're using for as a template. I'm going to click the eye next to it. I haven't deleted it yet. I'm just going to unsee it for now just to make sure that the fence is lined up and everything is all it's all even, all center. Now it's time to weld everything together. I'm just selecting the ranch gate we just made, just making sure it's all selected. I'm going to click combine and unite. We can click combine and weld. With the new update, when you weld the elements together in the layers panel, you can see each object that was weld together. So I clicked on the fence and I did a duplicate and I'm going to change it to the color of white. Now I am going to slice the ends of the fence. I'm going to be using a square shape and I'm just going to line it up with the ends. When I'm lining things up, I like to use my arrow keys just to make sure I'm not going to slice off anything extra. Once you have it all lined up, you just want to select your square and the fence and you want to click on slice. And delete your square and delete the extra pieces and there's your fence. And now I'm going to duplicate for the other side. I did a flip, flip horizontal but it really didn't make any difference so you don't have to flip it and I'm just not lining it up I'm using my arrow keys Now it's time to put everything together. So here I am sizing my ranch. I'm just gonna have one plank out on the sides just like that.
So for the sunflower, I'm going to be using just the flower part, not the stem. So I clicked on the stem and I deleted it. I'm going to be using two sunflowers. So I did a duplicate and I'm just sizing them to my liking. I'm doing one big one and one small one. I forgot to add the grass, so let's go to our images and search up grass, and it's the second one. And now you just want to add your grass, your hedge, and your banner, and just place it however you like, and size it however big or small. I'm doing the grass the same length as the fence. So once you have your banner in place, you can start like adjusting the, the pieces. So I'm just making the hedge a little bit bigger. For the daisy, I want my daisy to be two and a half inches wide. So I'm just gonna be sizing it as in like the whole flower thing. I'm just gonna click in on one of the big ones and I'm just gonna be checking as a size. I'm just gonna be clicking and checking to make sure that it's at two and a half. So right now it's at 2.525 and that's how big I want it. And I'm not gonna be using the green leaves right here so I'm just gonna click on it and delete click and delete and now I'm gonna be adjusting the sizes of the leaves I'm, on, I'm going to click on it I'm going to ungroup you don't have to use the same size as me for the leaves so this is your cake top or you can size it however you want you can make it big or small but I'm, I did 1.22 in width. I'm going to do a duplicate and I'm going to flip, flip horizontal and just adjust it. I'm not going to be using this leaf, so I deleted it and I'm going to be doing the same to this one. This one I did a little bit smaller than the first one. It was a little bit too small, so I just made, made it tad a bit bigger and then I did a duplicate and then I did a flip horizontal for the other side da, da. I also forgot to add the ribbon for the cake topper so I just typed in ribbon and the one I'm using is all the way down here but this is the code for it use any ribbon you like but this is the one I'm going to be using I'm going to be changing the color of it I'm going to do like a blue and just keeping it white the background and I'm just going to place it right here For the name, I have two favorite cursive fonts that I like to use. One of them is Hello Honey and the second one is Baby Darling. I got these fonts on .font.com so I'm just typing out my name. So that one is Baby Darling and then I'm going to do this one and Hello Honey. And I'm just going to see which one I like better to use. Okay, so I prefer the Hello Honey than the Baby Darling one. So as you can see, the, the letter doesn't line up with the way the banner is. So I ungrouped my text 
and I'm just gonna be selecting each letter and just moving it more up. Once you check, you want to check that it's all lined up. So you just want to select and do a well. So combine, unite, and I'm adding an offset. So I'm going to be doing the size 0.97. You can also add another offset so it can be more layered and more detailed. Just changing the color. I'm going to yellow because it's going to be a gold foil cardstock I'm going to be using. And now it's time to add the number. So I'm going to be using this rope font. It's called Tally D and it's from the font. This is the one I use. I'm just going to do the number 6 and add in an offset. The offset was 0.97. I'm just going to be changing the color as well. Now I'm going to size my cake topper to its final size. So I usually make my cake topper 7 to 8 and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to be moving the flower side and the cake topper side. So you can make your cake topper any size you like. Depends how big or small your cake is. But I usually do this size and also this cake topper is pretty long and I don't want to make it too wide and not it's going to be too big. So after I'm done sizing, now I'm going to add a shadow to the back of your cake topper. So this is where you're able to place the arch, like all the elements together. So you want to select your arch, fence, hedge, grass, banner, and ribbon. I had a little bit of trouble doing this part because of the new update. So usually with the old update, you're able to just click on the weld button and it'll completely weld for you. So once you select those elements, you want to do a duplicate. And as you can see here, I'm trying to see I wasn't able to weld it. Like I have it selected and then where you in the combine at the bottom. Like, I'm not able to select it. So with the old version, I was just able to weld and it will weld everything for me. But I wasn't able to do that. So I had to select each element and weld them one by one. So that's what I'm doing here. And you see I weld the hedge and then I wasn't able to weld the grass on its own. So I had to undo it, I had to select the hedge and the grass and weld those together. So when you're doing this welding, make sh try not to like move like your images around. You just want them to stay where they're at. I'm just bringing the, ba the banner up front. For the arch, I was not able to weld it with the print and cut, so I deleted the print and cut. I clicked on the arch frame and then did a weld. I sent it to the back. And then I selected all and I did a weld. I select again. Click on contour. Hide all contours. And there's your shadow. So when I'm making K toppers, I always do this step I always do this step just because it's easier to assemble and it looks cleaner in the back I sent the shadow to the back and I'm just placing it in the back of the design and I'm going to do a contour and I'm going to select that little square I did a duplicate of the horse because I'm gonna stack them up so it can pop out more and I'm just gonna be changing the color of the sunflowers.
also deleted the mane of the horse that we duplicated and this is the final design now it's time to assemble the k-topper i'm going to start with the arch i'm going to be using this glue pen because it's really has a really fine tip and it's called zig memory system and i got it at hobby lobby i think for $2.99 or $4.99 so i'm just gonna be putting the arch together For the name, I used this gold for cardstock. I purchased it at Michael's and I'm going to be using the circle foam tape that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It comes in a pack with different sizes. So my circles are too big for the name, so I'm just going to cut them in half. For the banner and Cricut Design Space, I forgot to change this part to the color pink. I'm going to be using these foam tape rectangles. I purchased them at the Dollar Tree. They are in the hardware section, not in the craft section. So if you can't find them in the craft section, they are in the hardware section. These foam rectangles are kind of they're thin. So I did two layers of foam tape so I can have more of a elevated look.
Now for the daisy, this is my first time assembling this flower and it's pretty simple and pretty easy to assemble.
my Cricut sometimes has trouble cutting out small details and also this is a texture car stock so it's a little bit thicker and I'm just gonna be popping out the, the, the pieces from the hole so I'm just gonna be using my weighting tool and I'm just gonna pop them out one by one this is how it looks now I got ripped a little bit but it's not really noticeable I'm gonna be using this new tool that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's like a sticker maker and it's really great for small detail stuff so he's gonna put it in and then pull out the bottom and you want to rub it and peel and as you can see it's sticky on the back and I'm just gonna stick it on there and you can see a little bit of the adhesive but it it's not super noticeable but you can still see a little bit but it's much more easier than glue Whenever you're assembling your cake topper or your project, it's important that you have Cricut Design Space open so you can always look at your design and see how things should be placed or assembled. Like for example, this hedge, I was having trouble on, on how I should place it. So I was just looking back on my computer, seeing how it should be placed. And also, I forgot to do this in the design process but duplicate your hedge and with that duplicate select the hedge and do a weld so you are able to stick the the hedge pieces like i'm doing on the welded hedge so i totally forgot to do that in the design process I struggled so much with these sunflowers I was not able to perfectly line them up it took me like a good 10 minutes and I was just like oh whatever and I just glued them like on top of each other without lining up the petals and it's not perfect but next time I'll definitely use some other type of flowers
Now I'm going to be placing the banner. I'm going to be using this double sided tape that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I'm using this so I can stick on faster and I don't have to wait for it to dry. As you can see, the banner also needs some support. So I'm going to put it in three layers of the foam tape circles. You can also use foam tape or you can use a rectangles foam tape from the Dollar Tree. They are a little bit thinner, so I think you might need like four layers of those. When placing the ribbon, I'm trying to match it with the shadow in the back, as you can see. And it took me a while, like, just to get it, like, perfectly placed. But next time, when I'm welding, I won't weld the ribbon. When placing the horse, you can see it, since, like, the hedge and the grass and the banner is so lifted up compared to, like, the arch. So I'm going to be adding two layers of the foam tape circles just to the top part just so it can stick well actually I did three layers so three layers of the foam tape circles Now it's time to glue in your stick. I'm going to be using this hot glue gun. I got it at Walmart. 
it's just a cheap little hot glue gun it's really nothing special and my cake topper isn't super heavy so one stick will be just fine if you think it's really heavy and needs more support you can always use two sticks instead of one I'm going to be using my guidelines on the mat just to make sure it's straight and centered. Also make sure to stick your cake topper a little bit up like into the arch so it can your cake topper can be supported. Here I am making sure that the cake topper is not flimsy and as you can see it's not. That's why it's important to stick the cake topper stick just a little bit more up but also to make sure you have enough space for it to stick into the cake. And we are finished with our cake topper. If you don't like these head pieces like poking out you can always trim it with your scissors or in design space during the design process you can also make your banner just a little bit bigger so it covers the end of the hedge the sunflowers i might do a different type of sunflower next time because i can see they're not really lined up it doesn't look bad but just for next time you can always choose some different type of sunflowers and that is all guys thank you so much for watching my cake topper video i hope you guys learned something new I'm going to be listing the materials in the description box below as well as my email if you guys have any questions or concern. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be posting more videos like this. Comment down below what I should post next. And thank you for watching. Bye.